How you guys doing? This is Johnny back here at MyMixEngineer.com and today I'm going to show you guys how to optimize your Mac systems for Pro Tools. Again, Mac systems. So here, let's jump right on into Pro Tools open. We're going to go to Pro Tools preferences. We're going to go with my start on display. We're going to go to operation right here. Make sure you have the backup enabled and what this does is we all know Pro Tools crash from time to time for for God given reasons who knows but it crashes so I usually set this back up every one minute and I do up to 30 you can go up to 99 if you would like 99 so you have 99 backups within the session and once once that fill up every minute it'll go it'll recycle which is good because if you in the middle of you just got that right amount of compression for something and then as soon as you try to open up another plug in or insert another plug in it just crashes on you at least you got your last setting hopefully that minute didn't pass by so me personally I do 30 all right we're gonna go to setup we're gonna go to playback engine click here uh, the buffering size if I if you're mixing I recommend 1,002 1,024 samples if you're recording you can go all the way down to 30 th 32 samples um, if your system allows it if you got a high power system um, if you are using like say auto tunes or something like that and you get this big delay or your system won't let you record with auto tunes if you try to get that T pain effect or you try to get a good singing vocal or just tune a little bit. I usually go to 120. Um, it depends. I can go, I still can run it at 64 samples. But for people who have less processors, you may want to run at, you know, 128 to 256 samples while recording. Then you back to mixing, then you can go to 1002, 1024 samples processors uh, when it gets to this the rule of thumb is use one less than what you have if you have two use one if you have four processors use three me I have eight I'm gonna use seven twelve use eleven so on and so forth um, that leaves one processor open to run your operating system in the background um, the CPU usage limit you can leave it at 8 to 5 some people take it up to 99 meaning it's going to use all the processing power of those seven processors or one processor or whatever how many processors you choose so me I would use 8 to 5 so it won't stress out my computer uh, the host engine um, with the error the ignore errors with that what happens is if Say, for instance, uh, an error happens while you're playing back, playing something or recording, you'll get this popping and clicking noise. You don't want that. Me personally, I don't want it. So don't click this. I don't click it. Just me perfect. My preferences. Uh, your delay compensation engine, you, if it's on, you will know that it's on with this D right here in the transport window. You'll see this DLY, which is delay. Um, it'll be green if it turns red you have three options here you have short which that's the very first one it should be green if it's red then you want to go to long it, you may when you start adding on other native plugins it might turn red again you can go to max uh, down here where you see the disc playback this right here is for HD only uh, basically, it use it utilizes your RAM, your, your free RAM, to uh, hold and read and write your audio. So your audio is not going to be read from your external hard drive. Hopefully, you guys are using an external hard drive for your Pro Tools sessions. It's not wise to save all your Pro Tools sessions onto your internal hard drive because it's a lot of work that your internal hard drive is doing so I'd use the external hard drive point blank um, you can I can go up to 9 gigs but as you can see I don't have 9 gigs free but I'm using 
right now I'm using five, about seven, and I have um, six gigs free basically. So I'm only using three most sessions that I receive, it, just probably like three gigs. If it's a large session, I'll bring it up to like five at the tops. So here, I'll clean it out. What else? Inside of Pro Tools, that should be it. Also, here we go to System Preferences. That's gonna pop up. We go to Engine. I mean, your Energy Saver. Normally, if I'm working in Pro Tools, I know I'm gonna be working in it for a minute. I'm just gonna do a mix. I'm gonna turn off the computer sleep and the display. Set those on Never, and I'm gonna put this uh, hard drive so that it would not go to sleep at all. So my internal hard drive is going to stay awake the entire time. Once I'm done, bring it back down, bring every back, everything back down as you like. Also, we're going to go back out. We're going to go to keyboard. We have your, your system and Pro Tools share some shortcuts. Um, so in my, my preference, I don't use a lot of the um, system, the actual Mac system shortcuts. So I just turn off, make sure that none of this is clicked. None of those. Those are clicked, but it, those not interfering with my Pro Tools. Um, those are, aren't interfering with Pro Tools as well. No, none of those are either. Uh, spotlight. It's not interfering with it. Nope. As you can see. And one more. There's one more thing I had to show. Oh, yeah. Here. Keyboard. Make sure that all your F1 and F2 and all your F features at the very top. Your F1 through F19. Make sure they are used as standard functions. Not as like the brightener or... Uh, or your play or your volume turn that off make sure they use as the regular features if you want them if you want to use them as the as the brightener or whatever you can hit the FN and then hit the brightener so yeah you guys that is basically it and your Pro Tools should run smooth you guys uh, this should uh, not uh, eliminate but kind of improve it's going to improve the functionality and the flow of Pro Tools with your Mac. Um, it should cut down on asking about native plugins, saying that you got too many on them, um, as well as you probably want to keep an eye on, eye on, right here I'm on window, go system usage, and you're probably going to keep an eye on this if you're using a lot of native plugins. If you're using UAD, it has their own DSP power, so you're not even going to be using this. So you, you, you should be fine. But yeah, keep an eye on that. And that is it, you guys. I hope you guys. I hope this helped you guys. Let's be honest. So again, remember, mixing is an art. Be you. Stay true. I'm out. Well, I ain't out. I'm still here, but you know. <laughs>